Hello friends, welcome to my channel Textile Gyan. I am Prakash Kudre, Assistant Professor in the Amir Textile Engineering College, Bilwada. Today we will basically talk about the texturizing process, but under that we will basically cover the twist texturizing. In my last video we have talked about the what is the basic concept of your texturizing, what is the need of texturizing and what are the different methods. Now as you know that to texturizing your formation of your crimp, loops, coils or crinkles in the filaments. So that will ultimately change the physical form of your fibers. Some of the example of this has been given shown in this figure. Here we can see that there are crimp fiber, curl fibers, high bulk, high stretch fibers or there are different types of the fibers which has been formed that will ultimately affect your behavior and the hand of fabrics if the yarns has been used for the manufacturing of the fabrics. So hand or handle that is we know that that is the general terms or characteristics which has been preserved by the sense of touch when the fabric is held in hand such as durability, softness, coolness or warmth or stiffness or roughness and resilience that are the properties when we see when we see, handle that fabric or we can touch that fabric so from that ultimately the sense of touch of the fabric that will affect by the surface structure of your fabric. So ultimately by this texturizing process we are ultimately changing this yarn surface that can be in the form of loops, coils or crinkles. So for the continuous filament yarn which has been used for the apparels a number of texturizing process can be employed either in textile industry or by the fiber producers. In latter cases, the yarns are referred to as a producer textured yarns. Most of the apparel texturizing techniques are high speed processes and the processes for the large toes may run at the low speed but at the higher value. So the texturized yarns can be broadly classified into three categories which are first one is your stretch yarn. So what is the meaning of the stretch yarn? The stretch yarns shows high stretch, moderate bulk per unit weight and helical crimpiness. The elastic extensivity can be as high as 400% and these yarns are mostly used for the stretch to fit type of the yarns. So in case of the stretch yarns, we have the high stretch but it has the moderate bulkiness and the extensivity can be as high as your 400%. So that is basically used for your stretch to fit type of the fabric. The second type of the texturized yarn is your modified stretch yarns. So these yarns exhibit the moderate degree of stretch but it has a higher bulk per unit weight. And it could be your helical or planar crimpiness. And yarn can be used, this yarn can be used for the shirting and suitings. So here the stretch is moderate but the bulkiness is higher per unit weight and next is your bulk yarns so these yarns exhibits higher increase bulk with little or no stretch and it is loopy in structures and it has the common accessibility and these yarns can be used in the shutting and suiting applications so we have seen the three basic Texturized yarns, how they are classified depending on the stretch and bulkiness of your yarn. So now you'll see what are the different methods and how the yarn characteristics can be possible to make from this texturized yarns. The first one method is your depending upon your heat setting, it has been your single heater fault twist texturizing where we get the high stretch yarn characteristics and the correct status of is it is basically nowadays majorly used in case of nylon while modified fault twist texturizing that is used for high bulk but medium stretch yarn productions but nowadays it is absolute for your nylon there are double heaters fault twist texturizing where high bulk low stretch yarns can be produced from the double heater for twist texturizing and this is majorly used in case of polyester yarn. Similarly, if you see 
there are different methods by which different yarn characteristic can be possible to make for example if you see the stubber box method from this we will get the high bulk and medium stretch yarn similarly age cream yarns which also gives the high bulk and medium stretch but these two methods are obsolete nowadays nowadays basically we are using the fault twist texturizing method and air jet texturizing method like in air jet we are getting the projecting loops which has the significant nowadays we are producing this air jet texturized yarns so there are different methods by which we can produce the high cream high bulk and medium stage to high stage yarns that can be used for different applications so now we'll see how the twist texturizing method is there so the basic of your twist texturizing is to twist the yarns as highly as possible and then we need to do the set setting of that yarn by the heating and cooling and finally the untwisting of yarn has been done like in my last video we had talked about the basic three steps of your texturizing where we need to first twist that yarn for the de for disorientation of your filament next we need to do the heat setting heating where it has been set into different forms and then we need to do the cooling process after that untwisting of this set yarn or cool yarn we need to do so you will get the texturized yarn so from this we will get the twist free bundle of twist lively filament in order to relieve this torque the filaments learn into the pigtail which causes the large yarn contractions so these yarns can be stretched to the over five times its fully contracted length before the filament are straight straightened out so in this case the yarn has been straight straightened down to the five times to the this original length before the filament has been straightened out and the recurring power is also strong and the fabric can be highly stretched if the yarn has been used for this fabric productions but it come back when it has been released so it has the high stretch at the same time recovery property however it has said it is not only the fiber twist setting is important the filament are in the helical configuration in the twisted yarn and after setting they want to return to the print yarn so this this get the initial form of fiber buckling which could be happen so when fiber fully extended stretch yarn is allowed to contact by 10 to 20% then the filament follows a helical path which alternate form from right handed to the left handed like if you know that the filament can be in the has a twist if you apply the twist that could be a yes twisted or z twisted yarn so in this case also when we this fully extended stretch yarns is allowed to contact by 20 20% the filament follows the helical path which could alternate from your left hand, right handed to the left handed when the yarn is set in the form it has the high bulk and low stretch properties so the basics of this machines for the both stretch and set yarns was established in 1950s which has been shown here here you can see that the first one is your fault twist crimping and second one is your fault twist crimping with modified stretch systems so what is the basic difference in this is as we need here you can see this fault twist crimping supply yarn is here then it need to pass through this volume control then tensioner then tensioner to the feed roller then it need to pass through the first heading zones and the fault twisting has been happened in this part then delivered yarn and finally it has been taken to the take off winder but in case of this fault twist crimping with modified stretch if you see here the same process has been to be follow but in that we have the inter intermediate stage where the first heating zone is there then followed by the fault twisting 
then we have the intermediate zones for the intermediate roller then we have the, again we have the second heating zone in between your intermediate and delivery roller and then finally it is taken out so from this we can see that there is a heating element which has been placed there are two heating elements elements has been there before the final delivery that is first heating zone is in between your feed roller and intermediate roller and in between that we have the fault twisting has been happen and the after the intermediate roller there is another heat setting zone is there in between your intermediate zone and delivery rules so thank you so much students i hope you understood this basic concept of this stay tuned to my channel also like share and comment on this video